Hi, Susan Norwell here from Rent University just to do a short course, really short lesson on writing with word prediction. So the goals of this lesson are to get some agreement on the importance of writing, um, the need to speed writing along for our complex kiddos um, because going letter by letter, um, which is what they need to do in the beginning, um, but really gets old after a while. We need to figure out a way to keep them interested and, and getting more of their ideas out at a faster rate. Um, word prediction in the ABC flipbooks and eye gaze frames. So, um, you know, we're going to focus on word prediction, but under undergirding this whole short lesson is the idea that you have some experience with ABC flipbooks or an eye gaze frame. Um, we're just adding in the word prediction piece. Um, I'm going to take a look at word prediction requirements. I think there are some things that kids need to have under their belt um, in order for word prediction to be successful for them. And I think this is really important because we don't want to taint or ruin this really good tool by not having them ready to use it. And that taking a look as really as writing as a process. Um, so I want you to think for a minute of what it would be like to have tons of ideas um, and, and saying all those ideas would be really tricky on your device. Um, and the device is really full of others' choices for you to say anyway. Um, you would really, as a, as a communicator, want to be really exact about what it is you want to say. Um, but spelling letter by letter can really take a long time. Um, it's why word prediction came into place to begin with is because we had kids who had really poor fine motor where they would write really short sentences so they didn't have to um, write as long. I, I really don't want that happening to my eye gaze users. I really don't. I want them be, being really invested in their writing um, and not see it as an arduous chore. Um, and let's not let um, ideation expression really suffer due to a lack of support and so it's always my goal um, it's always my passion to um, know what my kids ideas are what are the what are they thinking about what what's going on inside that that head of theirs that so so few of us have any access to um, I want access and I don't want anything I'm doing to hold them back or anything I'm not doing <laughs> to hold them back so um, word prediction, it really moves writing along um, with a lot less effort. So it is a really important tool in our tool belt. It is best used if a child is at less than 50 in making words. And so let me translate that for kids who don't, you know, use making words is they should have their, all their short vowels and beginning and ending sounds. Would help if they understood what a controlled R is, like in the word like card. Um, far. Um, word prediction really works best if you can get the first three letters correct, particularly the vowel. So when my kids are writing something and if nothing's coming up that they want, I always say, you know, check the vowel. Check the vowel because if the vowel's wrong, it's hard. Now, some of the, some of the systems like co-writers, um, co-writer by Don Johnston and clicker by, um, Crick Soft, they have a, a setting so that it will read invented spelling. So if you spell W-U-Z, was, W-A-S will come up. Um, but it is best if the kids have some good phonetic learning under their belts. And I don't think of a, there's a finer program than making words. Um, they need to be able to hold an idea. Okay, is this a kiddo who's going to say, I really want to say blah, blah, blah. And they are not just going to jump the first word that pops up because I'll just take it and then I will be done. So I don't usually find this tool effective for my kiddos with autism because they are much more likely to just randomly pick words and say, I'm finished. I'm done with this. Um, we still need to model how to use this tool. I think oftentimes we give kids tools and we forget that it needs to be modeled. If they're in an inclusive classroom, these tools should be modeled when the teacher's writing at the board, just like she models holding a marker and writing every letter herself. So it is really important that this be seen as a tool that can be utilized by many children and that it needs to be understood as a legitimate way of writing. Um, if you see kids scribbling with it, stop using it. In other words, if they're just picking words randomly, stop. It's not the point of word prediction. Word prediction is designed 
in in my mind it is there to support their ideation the minute we let them just use it like uh, they're scribbling away and they can just pick anything they want we've now taught them a very bad habit about this tool and they're not ready for it and it's okay um, it's okay because we, we want all these things in place in order for it to be successful and for it to work for them it's that important it's that important that we don't want to mess it up if that makes any sense whatsoever um, I'm going to take a look, give you some uh, movie examples of some different word prediction software just so you can see them. And the first one we're going to take a look at is Clicker. I think I'm running the word prediction board in Clicker 8, but it will also run. It was actually made in Clicker 7. Very, very adaptable. I'm going to show you word prediction in Clicker. Um, Clicker has um, certainly a lot of keyboards. Um, that are embedded into the software itself. I tend to work with really complex kids where eye gazing on a screen is it not their best mode of being able to write. I'm not saying that they don't get exposure to that. I'm not saying that they don't write things occasionally, but I am talking about when I'm instructing writing and expecting a written response, I would never make them use their device. I'll probably say this a couple of times in this presentation. Um, this was a quote, um, actually, I'm, this was a writing from a young man I'm working with who's 19 and has cerebral palsy, cannot use his hands, cannot talk, and has a whopping case of CVI. Um, and so he, um, we are reading Stamped. Um, which is a great book, yeah, very current for these times. And um, he, um, he is really, he is really enjoying the reading. But we got to the part about, um, we got to a part in the book about white, white privilege. And I pulled up the Jimmy Kimmel, um, his talk show host, Jimmy Kimmel's, um, monologue that he did on white privilege. Um, and in it, Jimmy says, imagine how frustrating it is to have to prove every day that you are not what people assume you are. I can't even get through saying it without crying, without welling up. As, as we heard it, like an electric shock, like went up my back and I could tell he was really struck by it because he just like looked at me with these big eyes. And this is what he wrote uh, with it. I have an ABC, ABC flip book. I said, oh, it looks like you have um, something to say. Uh, he surely did. Um, and so I gave him letter by letter. And as he gave me a letter, I put it into the keyboard below. And the keyboard below is the word prediction keyboard so that he can see the words big enough um, to see what's coming and can predict ahead what I'm going to say. And so he wrote, it was the same way for me. <laughs> Gave me an A, chose at, so I would go partner assisted scan. Do you want and as at, at the and I? Yes. Do you want and as? No. Do you want at? Yes. At. Okay. He gives me an S. I say, do you want some 670 support screenings? No. Okay, you're going to have to give me another letter. Do you want A, B, C, D? Yes. Do you want A? No. B, no. C, yes. Okay, do you want screening school, science, sky, skin? Yes. Do you want screening school? Yes. Do you want screenings? No. School. School. Yes. It was the same way for me at school. This is a young man who um, does have to prove every day that he isn't what people assume about him and really needs, needs, needs writing. Um, in order to express more sophisticated ideas than he can on his device. I am, I am a zealot for writing. I, I have things like this happen to me on a weekly basis, if not twice to three times a week, where somebody can get their idea out in such a way that I am listening to them. I am hearing their thoughts. I'm not hearing their choices between my thoughts anymore. 
I am hearing their thoughts. And how important it was for him to say this goes beyond anything I can explain to you because you weren't in there. You weren't seeing his face. You weren't seeing the tenacity with which he wrote. Um, it reminds me of the first time I wrote with a little girl with Rhett Syndrome. I was doing an assessment at her school. The school was trying to decide if they were going to put her in a self-contained classroom. And when I um, modeled some writing, she wrote, I have bad and spelled syndrome, S-Y-N-D-R-O-M. I'm like, yeah, honey, you do have a bad syndrome. You know, Rhett's a bad syndrome. I get it. Because you have a smart brain. So to me, writing is not negotiable. To me, writing is something I'm going to support in every way possible so that I can, I can, I want to know their thoughts. I really want to know what they're thinking. And they really want me to know what they're thinking. So it's a two-way street. Um, this is Clicker. Clicker's a scads amount of money. I think it's crazy, crazy expensive. So unless you're going to use it, or unless the school has a license, this is eight, Seven's got good prediction. Six has got good prediction. Um, unless you're going to use it for something else other than just prediction, I'm not sure I would invest, you know, the $400 or so in it. Um, but it gives me a lot of flexibility for my kids that have visual processing issues. I can't change the size of the letters or the choices in CoWriter. I'm stuck. I can't change this. I can change this so that it has a yellow background, which on his, I have changed. Every one of these has a yellow background with black um, bold-faced letters. So if you really need that flexibility on the presentation, you know, everything costs something, I guess. Um, it's why I have it, because I need that kind of flexibility for some of my kids. I'm not talking about one kid. I'm talking about multiple kids. So um, that is Clicker. And if you want to take a look at it and see what else it can do, you can go on their website. All right. Thanks. So now let's take a look at Don Johnston's co-writer. Um, co-writer um, is a product of Don Johnston and has been around for years and years. So um, let's take a look. Okay, so when we open up CoWriter, it opens up to a page where your writing's all stored, so everything that you've written is right there. Um, it's also, you're able to like, get rid of things, you're able to search for writing, and then you can add writing. Oh, the other thing I should, I should say on the home page is anything you've written, you can send. So if I pick this one, and I wanna send it, I can send it by message, I can send it by email, Twitter, Google Drive, Dropbox, you could copy it and put it someplace else. You can print. So you really have a lot of options, which I think um, makes this a really nice option. And this is on the iPad. I will tell you that their version of this that is on um, the computer is much, much more expensive. I think this is like in the $20 range and still does a lot. Um, you have a choice of dictionaries, of which dictionaries you might want to use. So you have... Um, one core, but there's also a three core basic, 6K beginning, so that you've got um, different choices, and I would try which one works for you. Usually you early writers are using simpler words so they can be down in here. Your more advanced writers are gonna be writing those simpler words and are gonna be fine, um, and they just need, um, they need the more advanced so that there's harder words. There are topic dictionaries available through Don Johnson and you can create your own topic um, dictionaries to put words in. So if you're doing a unit on let's say dinosaurs and you do, um, you write PT, pterodactyl is going to come up and it's unlikely that it'll come up in any other dictionary. So the dictionaries kind of help make this product even better. Um, you can change the settings so that you can have a different voice. It could read um, words and sentences and it has the ability to put high contrast. So I have high contrast on so that when I write a word, um, it will be in high contrast. Okay, so there's the various settings. We can turn that off now and we can get writing. So we're gonna hit that plus sign. 
and we have a black background because remember I made it high contrast and now I can write the same sentence I'm going to kind of write for everyone which is I space uh, I. somebody is saying to me A on the ABC, ABCD and they go yes and I go A I M M H A Happy. Happy. They've on their word prediction, they've given me the T, so I enter it in and then I ask them, Do you want then, that, the, to, this? Yes. Do you want then, that? Nope. Do you want the? Nope. Do you want to? Yes. To. To teach. Oh dear. Delete. Teach. Here's the interesting thing about co writer. The last time, because I had this, this took a few takes. <laughs> Not surprising if you know how I work. Um, it took me till TEA to get to teach, but co-writer learns. So the words that you use more frequently will come up faster because it actually learns what you're typing. That won't happen in the software that's that we're gonna find on it within Grid and within Snapcore first. Um, these are much more robust word prediction systems and even this one, which is on the iPad, which is way less expensive than the, the whole version of it, um, does that. It's kind of interesting. Teach. Teach you. You. I am happy to teach you. I am happy to teach you. And I think that voice is a little too slow, but that's how we figure it out. So we could go back to our settings. We could make the, the voice go a little bit faster. Maybe we don't want Heather, and we might want to download some other voices. Um, but we can, whoops, go back. Delete, delete. Let's see if speeding it up. I am happy to teach you. Right. There's a little problem because I'm actually running this from my iPad to my device, to my computer, and then recording it. So you're getting those glitches. It doesn't sound like that without the connection. So anyway, this is CoWriter. Um, on the iPad, I think it's in the $19, $20 range, so not so bad. All right, thank you. So now we're going to take a look at Grid 3's SuperCore, and this is SuperCore 50, and we're going to look at their keyboard um, that has word prediction. And then after that, we're going to look at SnapCore first and its keyboard with word prediction. <coughs> Let's take a look at writing with software um, on the kiddo's device um, as a form of word prediction. Um, we've looked at um, word prediction in um, Clicker. We've looked at word prediction in um, Don Johnston's co-writer um, as an app on the iPad. Now let's look what's available on um, kiddos devices within software. So when you open up the keyboard in SuperCore 50, um, this is the um, keyboard that comes up. It's an A-E-I-O-U as a vowel-led keyboard, so it matches what our flipbooks do um, at RETU. So you can say, you know, I'm, I'm H A happy. I'm happy to <laughs> B, T, E, A, teaching, teaching you. I get the Y up and there's the U, U. right away. I'm happy U. to be teaching you. If you have kiddos that would prefer QWERTY for some reason, there's a QWERTY with word prediction and an alphabetical order with word prediction. And I have found um, I have found the word prediction to be quite good, um, and I, I do think probably five options is is a good option because again we would like kiddos to be playing with this, working with it, and using it. If we get too many choices up top, it's just going to be too hard for them. Um, I added in my version, and I need help because I want them to have a quick way to ask for help. But all they have to do is jump home and they are in their full language system. So just like we would do it in um, Clicker or we would do it in CoWriter, 
we would be using the ABC flipbooks as they give us a letter we're inputting it into their device using their word prediction system in their device so um, here we are in snap core first and there is a really good keyboard down here on the on the left hand side unless you've moved it to the right hand side um, and in the rut pages that were done by Callie Ward and Jen Franchinelli their option um, opens this way and then you have to um, go to the word prediction I actually shifted that around and so when my kids are using this I have it open in the word prediction one because I really want them seeing word prediction right away so again it's the same philosophy is and this is an, again an, a vowel led keyboard um, because so many of the kids are used to using a vowel led keyboard whether it be um, in our ABC flip books or whether it's on an e-tran um, that's the presentation um, that they're used to. And again, you know, we could do the same thing I just did before, which is, you know, I, I am, am H happy, happy to, to be, be T E teaching, teaching you. Why? You. So we really get a chance to see how really nice it is. Um, these, I, I think these are pretty um, sophisticated word predictions for beginning writers. Um, I will tell you that I think the libraries in Don Johnston's co-writer and the libraries in Clicker are more sophisticated and you can actually define the libraries of what kind of vocabulary you would like to give your kiddo. But there's a lot to be said for playing around with what's on their device and using that system as not only a way for them to write, but a model for how they could be writing. So um, there we go. Those are two different software systems that we can look at in terms of um, word prediction. So let's review. Um, the review of this lesson would be that we agree on the importance of writing. Um, it's pretty tough not to agree on that when we're taking a look at um, the writing that that young man did about his experience at school. Um, that we do definitely need to speed writing along, that it can get really frustrating for kids if it's going too slow and we don't want them hampered in their expression because they don't have access to things that will help them speed it up. Um, that we really use word prediction um, in conjunction with an ABC flipbook or an eye gaze frame. Um, if you want to look at separate teachings on um, ABC flipbooks and eye gaze to help you, this um, lesson was just on how we would use word prediction in conjunction, but we're assuming you already know how to use an ABC flipbook or an eye gaze frame. Um, that you that you remember the word prediction requirements. Um, I really think that those requirements are essential to making this whole thing work. And it's really too important not to have it work. And last of all, we want to look at writing as a process. You know, this isn't built in a day. So I had a young lady I was working with, with Brett, and um, we read the book, um, The Other Side. Um, it's a story about a town that has a fence running between it, white people on one side, black people on the other, um, and then how these two girls become friends. And I said to her, I just want you to write your big idea about this book. What is your big idea, your big takeaway? And it was hope. She wrote H-O-P-E with her ABC flip book. She did H-O and I put it into word prediction and, and up came hope. PE for hope. Now what she'll do is in the next session is she'll take a look at hope what? Hope about what? What are we going to add to that? You know, I hope better or um, I hope change or anything that she adds to it that will help that sentence be that idea get fleshed out a little bit more. And then we can always we can always talk about um, so what I did the last session is, and she was having a really rough day. She had just had a day of seizures, and so she was having a tough day. So when that happens, then I go back into, okay, I'm going to be the lead, and she's going to be just taking it in versus putting anything out. 
is I just showed her page after page of the book. I said, okay, so look at this page, look at this graphic, this picture. Think about how that might tie to hope. So now she'll come prepared, having done that work, um, she'll come prepared the next time I see her, tomorrow, this happened yesterday, um, to being able to figure out which picture she wants to have, what graphic, what section of the book really ties to that idea of hope for her. And then we can flesh the idea out from there. Writing to me is a process, but it's always the process of getting their idea out. Not a particular form that I'm looking for. Not form. It's not form before process. It's idea before form. I, I don't worry about spelling. I don't worry about punctuation. If they're giving me something where I can glean their idea from it, they are communicating with writing, and that is the goal. All right, thank you for visiting Rhett University. If you want more information, please contact Courtney below. Um, that is our website above to check in on other courses. Thanks, and I hope you have a great day. All right, bye.